This is the concluding part in the Essa Hoax series. It started with Peaky Boy supposedly leaving Earth, and fittingly concludes with Peaky Boy supposedly returning to Earth. So it captures the experience of one complete false pantomime astronaut, a military asset, to promote mind control. I see it as a nice ring-fenced series to centre anyone under the mind control illusion of outer space. And I personally don't want to keep milking the same cow, as I have other things to work on. So it's a hoax part 10. And remember, this time, it's serious. Before Peaky Boy came home, he started mind controlling the kids even more. Get ready to meet a real life astronaut. Hi stargazers, ready for action? Yeah! Here's astronaut Tim to say hello to us from space. Hello Chris, hello stargazers. It's Tim Peak here and welcome on board the International Space Station. Thank you so much for getting involved in my mission and for wearing your mission patches, just like mine. It's fantastic being up here in space. I've been very busy getting to work on lots of experiments and also to help another astronaut settle in. Reporting for duty. Miss Mouse, that's right. Miss Mouse. Now Miss Mouse did so well on her training that she got to come along too. Come on Miss Mouse, let's show everybody what we can do in space. I just can't find the words really. had the ceremony Jeff congratulations you're now the commander of the International Space Station thank you thank you and uh, this award is to Tim Copra and it's the Order of St Michael Gold Award Order of St Michael let me present this award and then I'll explain a little bit about it for those that don't don't know about it uh, the Honorable Order of St. Michael, appearing before a most arduous and discriminatory committee of tried and proven Army aviators and aviation patriots, be it known that Timothy L. Copra was tested and found worthy of special recognition for outstanding contributions to the community of Army aviation and is hereby inducted into the Honorable Order of St. Michael. Military Gold. awards. The Archangel St. Michael is the embodiment of courage, justice, and gallantry. So too... Why is that medal not floating about? These qualities and represents excellence in aviation. Therefore, the president of the Army Aviation Excellence in mind control and deception. This patriot is due special honor and respect. Before they make their way uh, through that hatchway behind Peak into the Soyuz TMA 19M spacecraft. So these astronauts are leaving without their suits or boots on. Well, they're going to put on these suits and boots in that tiny capsule. Undocking confirmed. So here it is with curvature. 12:52 a.m. Central Time. You're undocking something going at 17,000 miles an hour, you wouldn't stay near it for very long. The International Space Station flew 254 miles over far eastern Mongolia to uh, increase uh, the opening rate between the Soyuz and the station by about six tenths of a meter per second. Here it is with clouds. Here it is with Spectrum 48K graphics. Accelerometers deactivated. And they will repress. Copy that. Good views of the uh, Soyuz TMA 19M spacecraft with Tim Copra, Tim Peake, and Yuri Malenchenko on board. As uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station fly over the uh, northernmost Japanese islands. Just a big load of rubbish. And now E1. Yuri Malenchenko, the uh, veteran. Uh, it's going the other way now. And to the, the right. The stretch of his <laughs> sixth flight into space is now uh, setting uh, the uh, controls on board the spacecraft uh, from the undocking uh, set of commands. Uh, to the uh, different set of ballistics commands that it's not even going forwards or burn. Uh, it's not even going the right direction it's sort of skewing isn't it the and they're trying to make us believe that a thrust has made it go that direction it doesn't make sense yeah they've upgraded to Commodore 64 and added a bit of flickering for effect go ahead please monitor 
This looks like it's going the wrong way. It's going away from Earth. Where is this CGI thing going? This year is up and running. It is. And here comes the Soyuz. Uh, looking good. It's, the graphics look like they've improved, actually. Here comes Tim Peake and the Soyuz. Oh, not really. Uh, uh, Blake 7, 1978. <laughs> now here it is with the moon. Work that camera, Soyuz. Again, a dramatic uh, picture from a trust camera on the International Space Station. The trust station camera? Showing, uh, the you have to have some kind of blind trust to believe it's real. Complex. It's going the wrong way. The serving as a uh, gorgeous backdrop for this uh, departure of Tim Copra, Tim Peake, and Yuri Malenchenko after 186 days aboard the orbit. So we're supposed to believe this moon shot and this uh, curvature shot are both taken from the ISS. It doesn't make sense. It's, the ISS, it, it's not possible. It has one perspective on the Soyuz. It doesn't make sense at all. It's another game set and match. So we have no re entry footage, no cameras on the Soyuz, just this animation made by five year olds. this from a recent ESA video documentary. In order to position the spacecraft adequately for the landing, the main canopy switches to symmetric suspension. This setup ensures the cosmonauts' seats are now perfectly positioned to absorb the landing impact shock. The retro rockets that were hidden behind the heat shield are prepared for firing. Inside the capsule, the crew seats automatically raise in order to prepare shock absorbers. Retro rockets and shock absorbers. Finally, 70 centimeters above the ground, the six retro rockets fire to further reduce the capsule speed. 70 centimeters? Are you sure? The capsule hits the ground, but the crew's seats continue moving down, and shock absorbers help to make the landing softer for the crew. The soft landing is not really soft, and you're waiting for this. Uh, soft landing to happen, which for me felt like a head-on collision between a truck and a small car. Everything has gone uh, by the book all the way from uh, hatch closure last night to the undocking earlier this morning to the deorbit burn that uh, took place uh, yeah, all nominal. not quite uh, 48 minutes ago. Yuri Malenchenko, the Soyuz commander, having uh, reported a short time ago that the crew is feeling well and that everything has gone normal. Have a radio on board the Soyuz that. Has returned from orbit. The parachute, the familiar large orange and white parachute. This main parachute covers an area of about a thousand meters. A thousand meters is one kilometer. So that's a one kilometer parachute. Remember that for later. Just a few feet off the ground, the soft landing engines uh, will fire. Uh, in a final braking maneuver, and uh, the Soyuz and its crew will be home. These braking thrusters just throw smoke bombs to stop anyone seeing this empty, hollow tin can from rolling all over the shop. Get that CGI chopper in there. And make sure Peaky Boy lands over that hill. And we're standing by for touchdown. Don't want to put all our trust in those smoke bombs. Yep, set up video footage where you can't see the landing. Perfectly normal. The Soyuz is home. Touchdown confirmed at uh, 4.15 a.m. Central Time. 3.15 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan. This is uh, filmed earlier, isn't it? Weeks or years ago, it's completely different terrain. Who believes this nonsense? There it was at uh, 4.15 a.m. Central Time, 3.15 p.m. So they're trying to tell us that this smoke is from a braking system that kicks in at 70 centimeters altitude. 
if they really had a thruster braking system, they would use it at least half a mile up, a few hundred meters up. This is nonsense. A nice sunny afternoon on a Saturday in south central Kazakhstan. The weather. As the, the landing occurred uh, right on target. The crew uh, now uh, being attended to uh, by uh, flight surgeons and uh, nurses. Keep the boy trying not to laugh. A standard procedure as uh, they have an opportunity uh, to get their land legs back. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, very good. It was incredible. Yeah, it was real ride. Best, uh, best ride I've been on ever. Best ride I've been on ever. That's the sort of thing an 11 year old says at the fairground. Jim, David, come on over here. Jim, David, come on. Welcome back to planet Earth. Thank you, David. Great to see you looking so well. Just tell me how you're feeling right now. Uh, just truly elated. I mean, just the smells of, uh, of Earth are so strong. Um, and, uh, the smell of your bullshit is strong, Peaky Boy. signature is all wrong it's just pure lies So these astronauts are really hot, apparently, and they've just plonked them on deck chairs in the sun. Uh, that's a good question. I think I, I think I might be having some pizza later, and maybe, maybe a cold beer as well. Pizza and a cold beer. Man returns from space, speaks to the world. I want pizza and beer. This dude is like, don't overdo it, Peaky Boy. We should be looking ill and, you know, anxious and shouldn't, shouldn't be talking about booze and pieces. Oh, oh, we forgot one. Copra. Come on. Search and recovery forces. Peaky Boy's over there talking about pizza and beer and you're stuck in the tin can, Copra. Holding him, holding him. Oi, fat boy, what's your belly in my move face? Back, move back. <laughs> they just left him in there. Congratulations. Right here, right here. Where are you taking him? Raise the legs up. Okay, everyone's doing their job. There's no way if they really did do that journey they'd be sitting there with loads of people in front of cameras. It's just a big no-no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they fell for it. Yeah, they even think this 1980s phone proved satellites. Yeah, yeah. This dude, Melanchenko, is a much better actor than Peaky Boy. Subtle, subdued, looks a bit rattled and tired. Nothing about pizza and beer. Tim Copra all out of the Soyuz vehicle. Begin the process of opening up the hatch. Right, everyone stand behind them, facing the camera. Temperatures around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, everything this appears. This dude's to go always talking about the weather and what time it is. Uh, it's like the main English pastimes. Yep, and we'll be heading there soon. Like we said, all the all the crew members now off to the medical tent, so they'll get their checkouts, and then we'll be heading home soon enough. So. Uh, always good talking to you, Rob, and that's going to do it for me from here out in Kazakhstan. Thanks very much, Dan. Uh, that's NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt uh, with the search and recovery Public forces. Public Affairs Officer. ...on Germany and uh, a return to the European Astronaut Center. This thing would be hot, wouldn't it? And there's a gang of fat boys all touching it. I mean, who, who called it down? This thing was like 2,000 degrees about 20 minutes ago. I'm, I'm not too sure if these are bears or humans. I want someone to comment in the comments section and let me know and do some research. Back home on Earth after 186 days in space. Uh, uh, to the landing site itself. Billion dollar spaceship can land at an exact location on Earth. And, uh, Can't the, land uh, the right way up. Recovery personnel uh, 
maneuvering uh, the Soyuz descent module back to an upright position after it uh, landed and then was pulled onto its side. Not uncommon. Not uncommon. <laughs> and a good view of the uh, expansive uh, main parachute. Yeah, there's the one kilometer parachute. This ultimately will be and just for the record, to me, that, that's not one kilometer. Uh, technicians uh, for RSC Energia for uh, post-flight inspection as is uh, the descent module itself. Some of the systems uh, in uh, the avionics of these Soyuz vehicles are uh, reflown. One, one kilometer parachute there. This is just a movie set, nothing more. Okay guys, let's lift it up. Load the shit up. Let's lift up the platform. CIA media. That's a wrap. We got the footage. Send it to BBC and CNN. Get it to the robots. Again, uh, the Soyuz touching down at uh, 4.15 a.m. Central Time. Well, one kilometer parachute there. 3.15 p.m. at the landing site. Within, uh, you couldn't members, make uh, it up. Members of the uh, search and recovery forces, as well as technicians, get out of those Russians. Uh, Duty free. Entry suits and into more comfortable flight clothing. They will board three separate helicopters uh, for a two hour flight uh, back to the staging city of Karaganda where they will uh, participate in a short uh, Kazakh traditional welcoming ceremony uh, before boarding. Uh, this rusty tin can doesn't even look like the Soyuz module that was attached to the ISS. The one that was made of material, if you remember, from the previous episode. Now, 20,000 miles an hour in that, and a single tiny parachute slowed it down. The reason they uh, pushed it over, I think, is so we couldn't see that there were no thrusters on the bottom of it. It doesn't look very high-tech, does it? And they're not letting us look inside for some reason. Nice slide then. There's going to be an interview here. Yeah, the red one there. Uh, let's leave the tool here for now. Uh, due to the popularity of this series, I was allowed a live link up with Sky News. So where did Peaky Boy land? Really, in the middle of nowhere in Kazakhstan. What did Peaky Boy say he wanted to do now? He said he was really looking forward to having a pizza, having a beer. Was his missus there to greet him? Or a Sky laptop to talk to her? Uh, officials gave him a satellite phone uh, to speak to her and the signal kept cutting out. Did everyone else there smell the bullshit? Very interesting to hear Tim, Tim Peake talk about the pungent smells here. Why do you pretend to have a delay when you are not even in space? He is just about to leave, we believe, from this, from this open field. So after some more flying, Peaky Boy now looks super fit and healthy. No tiredness. Even happy to get in on some nationalism. Yeah, doing good. Thanks very much. The uh, the landing's very dynamic, and uh, obviously it's going to take a few days before I feel normal again. Feeling a lot of dizziness and uh, vertigo at the moment. Any time I move my this is not a dizzy, nauseous man. That's normal after six months in space. But you, they have no problem. I mean, you. you are no, okay. no, no problems at all. No, it's just perfectly normal. It's what everybody goes through when you come back <laughs> to Earth's atmosphere, and then you ha your body has to readapt, you know, to uh, to one G environment. But your impressions of the Earth back to Earth? Ah, oh, phenomenal! And those first few moments on the steps of Kazakhstan, you know, the smells and the breeze. Smell of your bullshit. Uh, really, you know, hit me very hard, and it was great to be back on Earth. It really was. Check this out. This guy in the dark blue to Peaky Boy's right. He looks like a total agent. He's looking around, seeing if anyone's dodgy. And in a minute they both grab him, sort of march him off. I mean this is possibly his handler. 
bunch of crisis actors there. Some it ain't right there. This is where Tim Peake will recover from six months in orbit, and I've got a guided tour. So, this will be it. So, this is the area where we will host Mr. Peake. It's very modern, yeah. It's very... It looks a bit like the space station. No windows, <laughs> white rooms. It feel like home for him. Deep within Cologne's Institute for Aerospace Medicine is. Looks like a mind control center. While doctors closely monitor his health, and he readapts to family life. Family life in there. We have three bedrooms. We no escape, peaky boy. Sure. But this is no holiday home. He'll be a guinea pig. For be a guinea pig for mind control scientists. The effects of space travel on the human body. The mind control machine. You are an astronaut. You are a space monkey. DLR. Direct lies recalibration will be pacing these futuristic corridors for up to three weeks then it's back to some semblance of normality now the headmaster of this school is going to be getting a call from globe hacker soon now this you really couldn't make up Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mind control supreme. Floppy door. Globe Earths. Year mind control project. Mickey Boy's a new idol, a new celebrity, a new mind control talisman. Not happy about Gimp Teacher, personally, don't think it's right. I'm looking after two kilograms of very special space seeds. You just couldn't make it up, could you? You you couldn't make it up. Tim P, he's only gone and done it. A walk in space with England watching. That boy from Westbury, who'd have thought it? Tim P, what a man, what a hero. Look at the state of that. Tim Peake's going to hell Riddled with astral parasites Lying to everyone A soulless toxic entity What I've enjoyed about the SS series is the seriousness and a lack of childish memes So let's have a quick five minute spin through what else has been going on uh, the Galileo satellite took off last week. A five grand firework from the ground. Then more CGI sex toys. And what is that?
That's the third stage, third stage with this girl. Antarctica is looking good there. <laughs> stage. Separation. The, the frigate, the frigate uh, first ignition, right on time, burned for 13 minutes. Set in 2014 between flights 8 and 9, Galileo flights 8 and 9 in July. What, what is this thing? August. Now, the scheduled separation you see on the screen, the two satellites. Uh, and I found these new SSCGI telescopes. and a protective dome almost 80 meters high will make this one of the biggest astronomical projects ever undertaken. Truly an extremely large telescope. I, I, don't, I don't even know what this is. I'm just lost for words. This is some Scooby-Doo cartoon about landing on an asteroid. What is this thing? I mean, if space really did exist, and asteroids in space did exist, and space travel and satellites did exist, what would be the point of landing on an asteroid? What? What? Why? What? What? What, what is it doing? This is Essa saying a small meteorite cracked a window on the ISS. This is supposedly a Blue Origin spaceship landing. Massive curvature issues. GoPro on LSD. Still got curvature issues. Still got curvature issues. landed and still got curvature issues. It's an earthbound killer asteroid. Spaceship's going to sort that out. Uh, there's now 8.8 .8 billion Earth planets in the galaxy. Galaxies don't even exist. And they found a planet with a 100% chance of life. Disclosure TV is really shill TV. So Saturn's rings now have a dent. <sighs> and we've got two moons all of a sudden.
may have. It's a good job this is serious and I don't do memes. Almost weekly now, there is more Mars propaganda force manure. Oh, it's so epic! You know things are not right when you have a failed pop star, Brian Cox, a failed actor, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and a failed comedian, Bill Nye, presenting science to your children. So now you get it, that stinky lying elite system of tax, control, rules and deception is not your friend. It is there to use and manipulate you, so make the adjustments to your life that suit your new knowledge. I hope you enjoyed the series, and I'm sending positive vibes your way, and I'm sure I'll make a future cameo episode when they smash up the ISS, or when they do the Humans on Mars pantomime. Peace.